In this video, I will be making snake using assembly. Most people would call it crazy, some insane, and my personal favorite, a weird mental illness. Which is exactly what it is. Like, why would someone create snake in assembly? The pain and suffer. Now, in order to make a game in assembly, one must study the art of assembly and CPU architecture. So, I started out by studying the art of assembly 8086, just to make a game using assembly 6502. The difference? I don't know. 6502 minus 8086 equals minus 1584. <gasps> it looks like my bank account! Anyways, assembly is not enough. We also need to be able to show stuff on the screen. So, let's install Fuex NES emulator. And then to make sure that the emulator works, let's download Pac-Man from a hopefully very legit web page. Alright, it seems legit and it works. Unlike my Pac-Man gaming skills, they're bad. But now, let's get things started. First, let's make a simple application that will do absolutely nothing. Compile it, run it, why not compile? What do you mean error, comma, or semicolon expected after top level declaration? This ain't all C programming we're doing. Oh, we need to compile with CA and not CC, because CC is for C, while CA is for assembly. <laughs> this took me two hours to realize. <laughs> But now that we know how to compile properly, I think it's time that we level up. We will do that by following this tutorial by this absolute Chad Inkbox, link it in the description. It talks about best practices. And yeah, that is kind of what we do around here. Not really. First, we'll set up some default values for the thing to work. And after that, we'll create the zero page, which will be much more important error later. Then we'll do a ink bin to slap in some data, aka sprites. And BAM! Absolute cinema! We got a grey window. Then, we'll set up the start and reset, where we'll clear the PPU. It stands for Picture Processing Unit. Or, what were you thinking it stood for? Okay, but after cleaning the PP, I mean clearing the PPU, we will add some sprites and color palettes, so the game will look cool and beautiful, just like you. And then, what we'll do is to load in a background, that we will delete later. That should be pretty much it. Let's see. And this is what your program should look like right now. Uh -huh. Yeah, no, it doesn't. So now that means I actually have to read through this code and figure out why it doesn't work. I found it. You know those beautiful color palettes that we loaded in? Well, turns out we didn't load them in at all. So we have no colors. And that's why everything is gray. But now they are loaded in. I, I, I think. So now, behold, we got the whole world or something. I don't know. I'm not that good at history. Anyways, now that we've got something basic, we can start to add the player snip. And if you remember the important error zero page that I mentioned earlier, yeah, now it is important. This is where we will store the player variable, which will consist of four bytes. Y position, the sprite, not important, and X position. And boom, we got an L. And it's basically a snake. Anyways, let's make this L fall, guys. And wow! <laughs> that is fast. <laughs> let's fix that. There. Much better. Now, it would be pretty damn cool if you could also control the L. Which we can do by creating another variable in the important error zero page. And call it controller data. Which will store the keys that are being smashed. And then after just a few hours, we have managed to make it possible to move downwards by smashing the down arrow key. Insane progress, right? Alright. Now, let's make it possible to move upward. I thought I knew what I was doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Or not. Now we can't move at all. Alright. Now we can move up, down, and le- I messed up again. Right and left. Now we got a moving snake. Alright. Pick us a time. Let's change the L into a snake head. Damn. That is sad. But it works. Okay, but right now, there's a big problem. This snake has the free will to stand still. But it should be forced to be in constant motion, just like the snake from the snake game on my Nokia phone. And this is how we'll do it. We will create a new variable called directions in the very important error zero page, which will store the direction that we will take. We can also use this same variable to check that we don't try to do a 180, because that would be crazy. I mean, have you ever seen a snake do a 180? Nah, neither have I. Then we can update the snake position based on the directions variable. And if two or more directions are active at the same time, well, then we'll get some funny moving snake. But don't worry, that should not be possible, because we write great assembly code, or whatever this is. In fact, it was so good assembly code that I forgot you can't do a 180. The left and right seems to be working, but... Oh, and up, but not the left, up, the left, up... Oh, what? What? Okay. No, 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 no. Oh my god, I'm stupid. It works. I'm just... 
<laughs> All right, let's move the snake body too. And boom, just like that. We made progress from left to right, which only took two hours. Now, let's make the full snake move. We can do that by taking the body cell and moving it to the head. And then the head will move whatever direction it was forced to. All right, let's see if we can move to the right. Woo, it works. A bit fast. Hey. Let's reduce the speed by adding a timer variable in the important error zero page. Then on each update, the timer will go up. If timer equals 10, we will move the snake. Else, we will no move the snake. And bam! Look at that smooth movement with an extra space in there. All right. Now, let's try to move downwards. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> hey, it broke itself. Boom! Two body cells working. Now let's do three. What? <laughs> ah, she. I'm not making it any better. Well, if that ain't funny, apparently 12 minus 4 is equal to 7 in assembly 6502. Unless you turn on the carry flag. Then it works. All right. Now that we got a snake, let's make it possible to grow. But for that, we need a uh, apple. Because everybody knows a snake a day keeps the apples away. Or something like that. Because of time too. Let's go. Mm. Now, I would eat that apple if you know what I'm saying. All right, let's load it into the game. Uh, why is the apple moving? What happened to my snake? Why am I broke it? <clears throat> Fixed it. Okay, now let's make it possible to eat the apple. And boom! I mean poop. We got a shitting snake. Amazing. Like, it didn't even grow from eating the apple. Just a complete waste of calories. SMH. Okay, but now, if we eat the apple, we can grow. <laughs> Now, let's make it possible to grow further than 4 body cells. We can do that by increasing the player sprite variable in the important error zero page. Or not. It seems like 26 bytes is the maximum you can have in a zero page. But I want more. So let's put 256 bytes as the maximum. Alright, all that we need to do now is that when we eat a apple, we need to spawn in a new apple. So that our neck can grow. We can do that by using the timer variable from earlier to generate a pseudo random position for the apple to spawn on. So now, if we eat the apple, it uh, disappears and um, it doesn't spawn back in. Shit. Oh wait, no, it does. It's just outside of the frame. So, <laughs> yeah, let, let's just move it back into the frame. And bam, we can grow. Now, I was starting to think this is starting to look pretty damn cool, but then I get this call. Hello? What is that? Uh, it, it is my code. Yeah, that is bad too. But I was talking about the snake. Here, take this instead. Wow, what a cool guy. Thank you so much, Don, for the epic skin. You're very pog champ. Now, let's do collision. And this is how it should work. Before we move each cell forward, we check if the cell is in the same spot as the head. If it is, then that means we collided and we will reset the computer. I mean the game. All right, I got good news and bad news. The good news are the reset works. The bad news, only the reset works. It just resets the game as soon as it starts. But hey, at least it's a replayable game. But we don't like that. So let's just fix that. And now it works. And I also changed colors. Okay, now remember the third button that I said is not important. Yeah, I lied. We will be using it to rotate the snake head. And bada bing bada boom, where are you going? And now we got a rotating head. Next problemo. You have probably noticed that our snake likes to cut itself on the horizontal line. This happens because the nest is only allowed to display 8 sprites per line. But we can fix this by cheating a little bit. We don't normally cheat here, but now we will. We can remove that limit by checking this checkbox. Shh, don't tell anyone. Anyways, now if we play the game a bit further, we start to have some extra heads at length 20. Uh, it is a Severus, or shall I say, Snickerus. Alright, let's make the game harder. The longer you get, the faster you move. <laughs> And you win if you reach length 20. Not because I'm too lazy to fix the extra heads that appears at length 20, but because we need a winning condition, right? Okay, now we can lose, and as bad as losing is, losing without being told that you lost is really bad. So let's do the lost screen. First, let's get an L in there. It's upside down. <clears throat> I mean, an L. Now let's try to spell lost. 
Alright, so after an entire hour, I have not managed to spell lost, but I have managed to color the L blue. Guys, I, I can't spell lost. But let's just leave it at lost. I got it. The T is just in the wrong spot. And just after two hours, we have spelled lost in blue. Now let's see how this goes if you try to play the game. I mean, it looks pretty damn good, as long as you don't look at the text while eating. Now, let's try to lose the game. Okay, I would really like to be able to lose right now. That would be like, pretty damn ideal. But I'm not that good at losing, you know, I'm just too good at games, I can't lose. Nor can I win. It's a curse and a blessing. That was super close. Yes! I got it. It works. And now, if we restart the game, we continue off where we left off. Uh, what the what? Alright, let's do the winning screen. This took me only one hour compared to two hours that it took for the lost screen. I would say it's a pretty damn good improvement. So now we got an epic snake game going. Where you can eat. Where you can eat. Where you can eat. God damn. Where you can eat apples and you can grow. Stupid snake game. I, I, I don't even like snake. But anyways, guys, thank you for 1000 subscribers. That is like a... Uh, this many and by the way i do live streams now stuff is is <laughs> <hard. laughs> hard. which you should totally join you can do that by joining the discord and get notified when i go live all right that's it um here's a footage of me drinking milk because i did a post about milk will be included in the video so yeah here's milk thanks for watching like and subscribe and i will see you in the next one bye